Hey everybody, Sean here, and I hope you're doing well. We've exposed much of the nonsense going on in the Christian deliverance ministries in the past, and you can check out those videos in the Revealing Truth playlist on deliverance. There's over 60 videos on all your favorite deceivers that are keeping people in bondage to believing they need demons cast out on a regular basis. But today we've reached an all new high with these celebrity deceivers. They've gone Hollywood movie, theater size, world deception now. We've got all the leading people like Greg Locke, Alexander Pagani, Isaiah Saldivar, Vlad Savchuk, Daniel Adams, and Mike Signorelli teaming up together. The only person missing is Catherine Crick. These very well could be some of the people Jesus spoke of in Matthew 7 that will proclaim, Lord, Lord, did we not cast out demons in your name? And Jesus will say, depart from me, I never knew you. As I mentioned before, we've covered most of the reasons to why they say a Christian can have a demon that needs to be cast out in the Deliverance playlist. We often explain that a born-again believer is a new creation that is indwelt with the Holy Spirit, that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and that he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. But they don't seem to believe that. The Holy Spirit they have just isn't powerful enough to keep demons from being in their bodies. So they often bring up Luke 4.33 that tells us of a demon-possessed man in the synagogue that Jesus cast a demon out of. They use this example to show that Jesus cast demons out of someone in the temple, and therefore we can have demons in our bodies which are now the Holy Spirit's temple. Please understand that Jesus had not yet ascended and nobody was indwelt by the Holy Spirit at that time. So this man having a demon in him and being in the synagogue is not the same thing at all. The synagogue was a building, but Christ did not live there. It wasn't his dwelling place. Our bodies, on the other hand, are a permanent place where the Holy Spirit resides. And we're told in John 14 that he'll be with us forever. It's like comparing a demon-possessed person entering a church today versus a spirit-filled person having a demon in them. The first one is possible, the second example is not. So please, realize that the Holy Spirit in you is more powerful than the demons out there, and he's not sharing the temple of your body with a demon. Yes, we can be influenced and oppressed, but we are told in James 4, 7 to submit to God and resist the devil and he will flee. We are not told to cast demons out of believers. And if you've had a demon actually cast out of you, then you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. And if you've seen a demon cast out of someone that says they are a Christian, then understand that they are Christian only in word and not yet born again. Many of us believed all the right things about God and went through the motions of a Christian, like going to church and reading the Bible, but we were not actually born again. So please allow me to finish with asking you the most important question you'll ever be asked. If you died today, do you think you'd go to heaven? Fact is, we've all broken God's Ten Commandments and breaking God's law is called sin. 1 John 3, 4 tells us that sin is transgression of the law. Let's go through a few of those commandments. Ever told a lie? It only takes one to make someone a liar. Ever taken something that wasn't yours, even if it's small? That makes you a thief. Ever said, oh my God, or Jesus Christ in a moment of anger? That's called taking the Lord's name in vain. How about having a dirty thought? God is so perfect and holy that even thinking lustful things is considered adultery of the heart to him. And that's only four of the Ten Commandments. The penalty for sin is death, and God's prison, so to speak, is hell, and it's forever. And just like in a court of law, a good judge cannot overlook someone's crime, God will not overlook ours. But also like in a court of law, if the fine is paid, the judge can legally let you go, even though you're guilty. If we died today and stood before God, we'd all be guilty of breaking his laws. That's where Jesus comes in. He lived a sinless life and took the death penalty on our behalf. So just like someone paying your fine in court, Jesus paid our fine to God with his life. 
John 3.16 says that God loved us so much that he gave his one and only son and that whoever believes in him, that is, commits to Jesus, will not get what they deserve, but shall have everlasting life. Ephesians 2, 8-9 tells us that we are saved by grace through faith in Christ and not of works. There's nothing we can do to earn God's forgiveness. It's his gift to us. So if you aren't sure that you'd go to heaven today, then admit to God that you're sorry for breaking his laws. Admit that you deserve punishment for this and confess that you believe Jesus Christ has paid your fine on the cross that you're thankful and would do anything for God if he'll forgive you. There's no special words, just be honest with God. He knows everything anyways. If you're sincere about that, then scripture says that you will become a new creation. The old you will be gone and the new will come. You will be born again and with God's spirit now living inside you, you're gonna notice some definite changes in your life. Don't wait another minute because no one is guaranteed they'll see tomorrow. We're going to leave it here for today, but as always, feel free to leave your thoughts and comments below. And until next time, take care and God bless.